So welcome everyone to the um, session, this 11 o'clock session in the EdFi interoperability track on really using EdFi. We're gonna give examples of uses of EdFi within California, really focusing on two. And let me uh, tell you who will be presenting. So my name is John Watson. I work at the San Diego County Office of Education and I'll be joined by Juan Pablo Rodriguez, uh, who is one of our key database managers um, to talk a little bit about our work in EdFi. And then about halfway in, we're gonna turn it over to Noah Bookman. And so you'll get to see differences in the maturity of work around EdFi from the, the novel and immature work that we're really getting into, getting our feet wet with EdFi at the San Diego County Office of Ed, and then a, a really sophisticated system that has a, a foundation that started uh, years ago. I, I think as many as maybe eight, 10 years ago, Noah. Um, and that system is the core district initiative and they have an EdFi component that they've been building uh, into their system um, for I think the last couple of years, you get a good chance to, to see what that's like. So let me start off by, um, by basically um, describing how we at the San Diego County Office of Ed have embraced EdFi. It was about two years ago, we got involved with EdFi. And um, our goal with EdFi was to start to implement uh, both EdFi projects to learn about what we could do with EdFi, but also to, to gain uh, an awareness and a capability to provide EdFi related services. So, you know, we're a county office of education. Um, we have uh, over 500,000 students and there are 42 school districts and we support the school districts, so, and the schools and the teachers and the students uh, therein. So um, I'm gonna start by just quickly giving a, uh, an overview, <laughs> just very complex um, diagram that I have. This is a high level data view of our data systems. And so uh, just to spend a minute on it, I can show you that where we, where we have implemented EdFi is really in the topmost part of this, um, of this diagram. And so in the diagram, data comes in, external data comes in on the far left. And so we have all kinds of data uh, from CalPads, ODS extract files to third party applications that provide data. You can see assessment data. And you'll notice that some of the coloring of these various objects show what is in production, what's in development or what we're working on and what is conceptual at this point. So, um, in this secondary uh, incoming layer is, is um, our hosting the Synergy student information system. So we host Synergy, uh, I think for 35 or 36 different districts. Uh, about half of our districts are in Synergy and then we host for an adjacent county um, Synergy districts as well. So that, that provides another um, source of data for reporting. And so um, it's shown there as such. This, this next layer, is really what I'd call the interoperability layer. And so this is data being moved from systems into reporting systems. So up here is EdFi near the top, and data uh, for, for our various projects. I'm, I'm simplifying that this goes into a reporting data um, system, this data warehouse, and that we have existing systems at the bottom where data had been flowing in from both our student information systems and other sources through an ETL process to a warehouse. And then you know, I keep on moving along here. You see that there are internal analytics. We push data out to the cloud. So we get source files that we send off to core districts, for instance, as, a, as an external um, provider of analytics. And then we do some processing on our own. We also do a fair amount of extracts. So we take data that's in the student information systems and we provide custom in, uh, extracts to districts for use in a variety of external needs that they have. And then last but not least, um, everything that we produce is exposed uh, through various interfaces um, and more on that a little bit later. So EdFi setup takes a few steps. And if you saw the earlier session from Douglas Loyo uh, from the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, he's a, a like a 10 year EdFi expert. He talked uh, a bit about setting up EdFi and what's involved in setting up EdFi. Um, and so I'd like to turn it over to Juan Pablo if I can. And Juan Pablo, I'll run the slides, but um, he can give, Juan Pablo can give some 
uh, examples and just basically a, a walkthrough of, of what it takes to bring up an EdFi ODS, an EdFi system, and make the connections to a student information system. Um, and so, Juan Pablo? Thank you, John. Um, <clears throat> as, as John mentioned, we have a, a <clears throat> complete architecture that is already existing in our systems. And part of that is implementing um, EdFi. And as you probably heard this morning through uh, Douglas Loyo, uh, there is some steps that has to be followed before we can have an ODS, a functional ODS. As, as a San Diego County Office of Education being, <clears throat> being a small, well, not as small, but small in architecture and resources, we decided to create a basic, a basic setup. Uh, we pretty much uh, downloaded the empty, Databases set it up in our, in our database, uh, back, restore the databases and is establish the um, the ODS through a web server. And after that, we connected our load balancer uh, through this uh, web web servers, and we pretty much um, connected that into our systems. But you know, our goal is you know to bring forty two districts and to use EdFi in one way or another uh, to provide you know, specific applications, improving data quality and uh, analytical needs. Can we move to the next slide, John, please? So as, as, I, as I mentioned, we set up the latest ODS, uh, which is um, the most functional one right now, it is 3.4, but um, they have other versions, 3.5, and they implemented something called 5.0. We configure the EdFi admin, and this is a tool <clears throat> that allow us to configure applications that connects to the EdFi or the S. Uh, an application can be a student information system, or an application can be an outside uh, third-party tool that can be importing data into the ODS. But in our case, we, we set up uh, an external connection to connect one of our student information systems, in this case, one of our districts. We have 37 different databases and each one represents and at 37 dif different districts. So each district will qualify as an application in, in, in the admin tool. Then this admin tool will provide a key and secret that then is gonna be used to establish the uh, connection on EdFi with the student information system. Our Synergy system has a, uh, an interface that allow us to integrate with uh, EdFi. And in this screen, we pretty much enter the key secret. And then, you know, through a process of a few days, we start doing initial push. You know, in this case, it's 28 steps to perform, you know, various mappings, depending on the need in, in our case, uh, you know, we go through the 28 steps, so we upload as much data as we can. And we do data mapping with the descriptors. And then during the first couple uploads, some errors may come and you have to fix those either in the source data, which is directly into the Synergy interface, or, you know, try to uh, map to the correct descriptor because sometimes you, you can make them you know, the usual mistake of mapping to a different descriptor. And then once we have initially data, the data is pushed into the ODS, <clears throat> we do regular updates. And that's in a nutshell, the, the setup that we do in, in, in here in San Diego County Office of Education. It is a very simple process, but it takes a little bit of time to configure. Uh, but once it's set up, it is um, a process that, go smoothly. John? So, so maybe uh, at this point, Brian, I don't know if there were any questions and uh, please do type questions into the chat and we'll, we'll, we'll pause and, and answer them as we need to, but let me just check in, make sure we don't have anything pending. Nothing just point. yet, John. That's great. All right, I'm gonna continue then. And we're going to get into a pretty rapid fire section. Um, I'm gonna try to explain the various use cases that we built over the last few years, what we're currently working on. So uh, some of these are complete, um, uh, most are in development and some are prototypes. And so uh, let me go through these one by one. 
we have, uh, I'll just read you the list so you get a sense of what you're about to see, because this is going to pass by you in about five minutes. And um, some of them are pretty complex. Some of them are very straightforward. Uh, and I think some are really interesting at this point in time with how we use data. So we, one of the first implementations we had was to connect to a third party application. And that application was external to our data center. Everything Juan Pablo was describing is in a data center that we actually run, physical data center. So the Synergy Sys that he was talking about and the EdFi ODSs are really next to each other <laughs> physically. There are servers that are there that, that, that uh, you know, uh, we, they're you know, high security center, but when you think of it, uh, those systems, even though they surface as completely different out on the web, or if you have interfaces to them, they're actually physically right next to each other, which is kind of interesting for a county to have um, that kind of setup. So our, our first go was to try to connect to AWS, to an AWS-based ODS, and the ODS is the, the database underneath uh, EdFi, the operational data store. And so I'll go through that quickly. Then we had a couple of um, what would be considered non-standard EdFi cases. And um, I'll explain what I mean by that, but these were both trying to predict outcomes of students based on assessment data. And then um, next is the universal transcript prototype, um, uh, which uh, is a system for producing transcripts. You may wonder, well, well, don't the districts or the schools produce their transcripts? They do. Um, but we're both exploring and we have a, um, a group of student records, ROP records, that we're looking at trying to automate the process around uh, producing transcripts for those records, uh, long time historical records, like decades of, of uh, records. Then we have uh, an ABC report, which I'll quickly explain. It's an early warning report. And then um, uh, the data hub, which is uh, the last system I'll show you. So in the first case, you have the SIS and there's a really simple line uh, drawn to an ODS there. But the fact is, is that this is a lot more, uh, it appears basic, but it's a lot more complicated when you get into how we had to implement this. So this was really the first time within our county that we moved data, uh, unitary level student data from a student information system out to a third party um, application that was based in the cloud at AWS. And so technically, it really made sense. You could just connect the data and you're, and you're off and running. I think when you consider all the other ramifications of making a connection like that, we actually had a lot of foundational work to do that was non-technical in nature. So when you connect a system that's outside of another system that you manage, you have data governance issues. We had to set up um, and establish new agreements that hadn't been done before. Um, and I think in the process, AWS actually modified its arrangements, not because of San Diego County Office of Ed, but be, because of the types of projects they were encountering so that they, that the work that they do with ODSs online, with EdFi ODSs and other types of student databases, um, they are able to um, you know, agree to terms that make everyone feel comfortable that the data is gonna be protected, safe and, and housed even on the cloud. So that first process, once that was done, then we began the regular process of connecting the SIS to the ODS, uh, establishing that connection, working through the moving the different uh, groupings of data, the different data entities through mass processing, it's called, from the SIS to the ODS one time, and, and also mapping during that process. And then ultimately, we were able to turn on uh, the automated uh, synchronization, which would then happen nightly. So that's one case. The next case is one where we were uh, looking with two of our districts at predicting student performance. So the goal here was to take interim data, interim assessment data, and use that data to predict SVAC assessment results. So in order to do that, you, uh, one method, and the method we used, is to get um, historical data from interim assessments and historical data um, from uh, corresponding SVAC records for these students uh, for a couple of years, if you can, and then pulling that data into the ODS, and then, and then, I'm sorry, pushing it into the ODS, and then pulling the data out of the ODS for analysis. So we really use the ODS as a data standard. In this case, we pushed uh, data into the ODS, not using the normal API, but using some direct import processes, and then we pulled the data out through another set of processes and run uh, and ran um, the analysis using. R, the, uh, the statistics package that, that uh, is free and downloadable. We have a couple sessions on it today. 
Um, and then once the analysis was complete, we had pre-made uh, pre a Power BI report um, that uh, displays the results. I could just give you a sense of what that looks like. So in this case, uh, what you're looking at on the screen is something called a concordance table, which is the technique that we used. And so if students fell into certain ranges in the interim assessment, then we knew that they would fall into, based on the statistical uh, analysis of the data, into not met, nearly met, met or exceeded categories within the CASP results, the SBAC results. So that's uh, another use case. I'm gonna jump right over to um, the third. This one is the universal transcript prototype. And so this works, uh, just a diagram here. I'm just gonna go through these steps quickly. Um, a student can make a transcript request uh, of the system. They enter information that identifies who they are. And they have to upload a file, a signature form that they have that they can request the transcript. And SDCOE on the back end of the system reviews and approves or denies requests. And then if they're approved, there's an automated transcript data retrieval process, which reads data from data, data sets that are in uh, multiple ODSs. So multiple EDFI ODSs. And so if a student was in one site, uh, one uh, district, let's say, and then transferred to another, the idea behind this is that we can grab information about the student's transcript and uh, course taking history from multiple ODSs and then combine it together in a final transcript. And so we have this transcript generator and, um, and ultimately um, we produce the transcript. Now I'm glossing over one, one, <laughs> one point here, which is this blockchain um, portion. Um, we endeavored to make use of uh, the Ethereum blockchain to write out some details of the transcript, some metadata and something uh, called a hash value related to the data in the transcript, the electronic transcript, so that we could allow for um, someone who receives the file down the road, let's just say the student prints out the transcript, I'm sorry, passes on the PDF version of the transcript, which has this embedded information to say a school or college they're applying to or to an employer. If that school, college or employer wants to validate that that transcript has not been altered, that it's really valid, that it was generated by SDCOE, that it is owned by the student, we wanted to utilize blockchain to store um, characteristics of the transcript on blockchain so that it could be validated. So that was a, a key part of this work. And I'm just gonna show you a little bit about the interface. So this is the student transcript re request um, uh, form. This is um, currently in prototype stage, but it is out there. Um, so a student would enter their information. Again, there's a, I'm not gonna open up the backend side, but there's a, a management part of this application that SDCOE uh, can manage. And then once the transcript is generated, the information is pulled behind the scenes, the, the transcript is produced and generated and sent to the student. The student can pass that transcript to um, uh, you know, another party or a school, like I said, that they were applying to. And I'll just show you what one of these looks like. Um, this is a view of a transcript. So um, this is test data, not, nothing real here, um, but the transcript is generated from the EDFI data. Um, this is actually a generation that was done um, earlier today, it looks like. And uh, we have all the, all the uh, details about the, the student's activity. Um, and behind the scenes within this PDF is additional metadata that is used in that uh, blockchain process. So I can take a transcript and I'm gonna take another one here and go to the validation screen really quickly. And I'm going to upload this. Um, so this is another publicly facing interface. So I can take a transcript um, in this case, the transcript is in, invalid. It's been altered. I can upload it and run a check on the validation. And actually I'm getting um, a, a, an earlier message. So it may be more messed up than I thought. Uh, there are three messages. The transcript can be shown as validated, in which case you get a green shield. Um, it can be uh, reported that it is, has been altered, which is uh, what I thought would appear. Um, in this case, we may have messed up the transcript enough that it, the metadata couldn't even be pulled. So um, at any rate, this is our uh, process for um, transcripts. And I'm just wanna make sure that I, ah, 
just ran through that. So I'm going to go to the last couple of slides here, going back to the slide presentation. I know I just to give you a heads up, I'm just about two or three minutes away. Um, so uh, the next week's case is the early warning report. This is something we're actively working on. So San Diego County Office of Ed, I said, had 42 districts. Our largest is uh, San Diego Unified, um, over 100,000 students. But we have a number of small districts, uh, districts as small as a couple hundred students within the district. And I'm thinking of one in particular, a couple hundred students that, have, that are in a district that has an elementary, middle, and high school. And so uh, it, it, the idea we, um, with smaller districts of being able, because smaller districts also have smaller numbers of staff and infrastructure, uh, the, the, the idea that a district can readily access or produce their own analytics is sometimes a challenge. It doesn't matter the size of the district, that can be a challenge. We wanted to produce some output that could be utilized within a small district environment uh, based on EdFi that allowed for daily review of information that's in a student information system, but really focused on certain metrics. And so what we were looking at is what's called an ABC report. Um, the ABC is a technique, um, I think Ball Fons is the, uh, is the doctor who, or professor who created this back in 2029, 2011 timeframe. Um, but the idea is if you look at attendance, behavior and course taking uh, information uh, daily, um, and you keep track of it, you can see anomalies as they appear and, and, and make predictions um, or have an early warning if you start to see, say, attendance problems creeping up for a student or group of students. So the idea behind this system is that the district enters data in the student information system, it gets passed through EdFi, and then we pull the data out with some processing, and then via um, our data hub, which is the final interface I'll show you, we have this ABC report and I'll show you briefly what it looks like. Um, so this is our, our prototype um, report. Um, it basically um, reverse ranks students based on um, what would be considered uh, you know, an accumulation of marks in these three different areas. So these are attendance, studies and absence, behavior, common and serious behavior issues or discipline issues that arose, and then grades. Um, we're looking really for targeting Ds and Fs. So it, it seems simple. Uh, and we're in the process of building, but um, it, it can prove to be a useful tool for, um, um, you know, historically for schools, school districts to be able to leverage to just have regular behavior information, regular data behavior information about the student population. So a last uh, piece is the data hub prototype. Um, the data hub prototype is, um, is a vision that was uh, created or in, uh, brought about to have an interface at a regional level to both educational data and analytics and systems and services that are offered. So in the case of a, um, a county office of ed, you know, we have about 1150 to 1200 employees that are serving um, all of the districts and we have hundreds of services, both electronic services, um, run HR, and uh, the student information systems, but we also have just person-to-person -person services. And so the idea about managing all of that in one place is really at the core of the data hub concept. And so we have this prototype that we're building. And one aspect of it is an open data portal. And so I have a couple examples of, of links from this. Um, one of them is just some basic information about schools and districts within our area that's produced. Uh, another is we have a school reopening dashboard um, that we have implemented. And uh, recently, you know, you start to see behavior. It's really nice to be able to expose this data out and have access to it to the community about um, how, how uh, student reopening characteristics are changing the profile of student learning mode. So the idea behind the data hub is partially to be an open data portal, but it's also intended to be, and I'm gonna pretend like I've logged in as a district, here I am at Maine Unified, uh, a window to the services and uh, systems that we have at SDCOE. So we, we, we have information about data systems that, that districts have. We know that this district has PowerSchool, they're using SQL Server for data, uh, Power BI is their analytical system, and they have interim assessments. They're using NWEA map. We, we have information about the context, the primary context that would interface with us at, a, at the county level. 
We have their active software as service subscriptions. In this case, this district subscribes to Core, um, but they also may subscribe to any number of other services related to our county, payroll services, uh, school improvement services. And so uh, the idea behind this interface is to allow them to have the whole laundry list of services at their disposal and they can um, see where, where they stand, what services they're using, both uh, electronic and person to person, as well as make choices and order new services. Uh, maybe they didn't know that we offer ad hoc analytics when they need them. Um, so they can um, use this interface for that purpose. But it also has um, interfaces to other systems within our, our county. So we use ServiceNow for uh, ITS support. Uh, there are extracts, as I mentioned earlier, that are run. So the ideal would be to be able to show these uh, runs in a, a quick, easy to see uh, interface, you know, really all in one place. And then last but not least, these EdFi uh, statuses. So if they have ODSs, we can run live counts on various entities within the ODS and give that information. You can see this was updated this morning um, about uh, the, the ODSs that are um, operable within our data center on their behalf. And I think last here is the self-service section. Um, no active services right now, but you can order new services or check on services res with respect specifically to, to EdFi. So I'm gonna go back then to the presentation and I'm gonna pause one last time and then we're, we'll turn over to, um, to Noah. Um, any any questions at this point? Still no questions, John. That is great. <laughs> so Noah, I'm gonna pass over to you and uh, move on to the core districts. Great, um, thanks for that. You guys are hearing me okay? Yeah. Um, there was a question from David Vaughn that why don't we pause on that. Looks like the question is why use Ethereum for blockchain. So maybe John, you want to take that one first, and then I'm happy to jump into my piece. Tell you what, I'll, I'll take that offline. I'll respond in the chat. Okay. Okay, great. Um, all right. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Noah Bookman. I'm a, a, a Chief Solutions Officer at Education Analytics. Um, we support in California, we work in tight collaboration with the Core Data Collaborative. Um, my colleague, Eric Journalin, is also here in case there is a phone a friend technical question or a theoretical question about data architecture. Uh, he is our, uh, our, our resident data architecture artist. Uh, so uh, if you've got a question about that, he is here for that. Um, I, um, I guess one thing I'll prompt with, uh, start with is, uh, wow, it's a very impressive suite of stuff that San Diego County is doing. Um, and you know we recognize that that that, that that's amazing, and the team at San Diego County is strong. They do a lot of IT work, as you just saw. They support a lot of applications, but we recognize that many counties and districts are not in that position. Um, and so, part of what we've been trying to think about at Education Analytics is, um, and we're a nonprofit that uh, works with, um, uh, with works with states and districts all over the country, is um, how can we support uh, data interoperability and analytic applications at scale with high quality and low cost and also with reasonably low burden. Um, and so uh, that's been our general mission in this effort. Um, so I, I'm going to use this slide deck, which talks about, you know, what it looks like when we onboard districts into EdFi um, and also some of the visuals and analytics that we are working to, to build off of EdFi. Uh, and I, I won't cover every slide. I'll just cover a handful of these just to give folks a little bit of a flavor. Um, and then there's more in here if you kind of want to check it out later. Um, all right. So that is my opening. I'm just going to go into present slides mode. All right. Uh, so let's talk about this. So uh, I want to talk about a few different things here in this presentation here. One is, um, you know, just generally, uh, you've heard it three times now, probably a day, but what is that by? I won't say a whole lot about that because you've heard a lot. You've heard a lot. I'll do, um, we got Juan Pablo did a great job talking about the onboarding uh, process. I'll say a few words about that too, and a little bit about um, some of the steps in that process. Um, and then um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about how we're thinking about visuals and analytics uh, that, that, that either are currently coming off of EdFi or will in the future uh, in our work in California. Um, 
so first of all, Education Analytics, we are uh, a nonprofit organization. We're based in Madison, uh, uh, but we have staff around the country. I happen to be based uh, in, in Southern California myself. Um, uh, you know, we are a team of research scientists, analysts, engineers, data strategists, web developers, et cetera. Uh, we, so, so this is our group. We're so happy to be with you guys today. Um, uh, and um, we, you know, on, on the EdFi front, um, we have two major areas that we're working. One is in California with a handful of LEAs and growing, especially in the context of helping networks for school improvement. Uh, and the other is in the state of South Carolina, where uh, we are uh, building towards and pretty close to hosting an EdFi ODS for every district in the state in a partnership with the state of South Carolina. So, um, uh, and we're now, I think, one of like three or four organizations that's like a certified EdFi hoster uh, uh, through EdFi Alliance. Um, so EdFi Alliance, I, I, I think you heard a little bit about before uh, today as well, but um, we're, we're, we're proud to be part of uh, and partnered up with EdFi Alliance. Uh, and uh, you've been very fortunate to get some resourcing from our friends at the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation. Um, I'm not going to go through uh, all this. One thing I will say is that I think, you know, uh, EdFi, yes, is a data standard, and they have a data standard, but and we use some of the data standard, but almost more than anything else, uh, we use kind of like the architecture of EdFi and the sort of the 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 places that EdFi has structured to put things and some of the technology suite. So we rely heavily on EdFi's APIs, uh, the ODS, and some of the other technology suite. And it's it's a it's a community of technology and a framework uh, to store data. And the reason why that is important. Uh oh, I think my Zoom crashed. Is that right, John? No, I, frozen, but we can still hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. My Zoom froze and hopefully will come back. Um, uh, the the reason, you know, these kids at home, I, you know, my son shows up from, from his, his half day at school and all of a sudden, you know, things happen. Uh, so uh, the reason why that's important is so we rely on that sort of architecture. We don't always use the standard exactly as it is. And in fact, in our implementation in California, uh, uh, we kind of, in California, we kind of have a hybrid. I think I'm back now. Is that right? Yeah, you haven't left, but we we don't see screen. Great. Here it comes back. All right. Uh, that's important in California because one of the things we do is we map uh, often to sort of CalPad uh, definitions of metrics, um, as opposed to the Ed5 standards in some cases. Um, so I'll say just a little bit too about like the general concept of our architecture. Um, so what we do is um, currently uh, is we have districts uh, where we are currently mainly integrating student information system data. That's pretty much what we're doing right now. Um, and um, and so we're bringing the uh, student information system into a, an EdFi ODF. Uh, uh, we have then the ability to put those into a multi-tenant ODS. Uh, and then we take this data from uh, EdFi and from the district system that's been kind of uh, washed through the EdFi API and ODS process, and we put it into a data warehouse. Uh, and there's some reasons for that. Um, like there are reporting layers that you can build right off of the EdFi ODS, but there are some significant limitations to that. Um, and, uh, for example, uh, the EdFi ODS tends to be single year, I think it by definition is a single year. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we often want to do analytics that go over multiple years. Um, uh, and also putting into a separate data warehouse gives us the flexibility to uh, build analytics uh, on top of the EdFi sourced data. Um, and so for those of you that like the technical stuff, we're using something called Snowflake uh, to, to do this longitudinal data warehouse work. Um, so we're, we're passing data uh, through the EdFi process into Snowflake, and then we do our reporting uh, layer on top of the data warehouse as opposed to on top of the EdFi ODS. But what this EdFi process does for us, it's like super important, is it standardizes the data in a way that means that we can run common analytics across multiple district source data uh, uh, in a consistent way. 
So let's talk about the, the setup process. Um, so what we generally go through is we start by uh, configuring in a sandbox environment. Then we do something we call where, where we kind of prepare the mapping. Um, uh, I'll say a few words about that. Uh, then we uh, pr prepare the student information side. And then we go through uh, a sandbox based process to uh, map all the different domains from the SIS into the EdFi ODS. And then once we're feeling good enough, uh, we migrate from the sandbox into production. Uh, and then from there, we're on a schedule of regular updates. Uh, one of the things that we do and that we discovered is that, the, you know, in Aries, for example, there's something that Aries, we can get out of the back end of Aries and we can almost pre-configure a lot of the mappings um, uh, or the lot of suggested mappings for the district folks who are then doing the, doing the, um, the mapping work as an example. Um, so this goes through a little bit of the how, but, you know, there, each, each student information system has their own configuration for, for EdFi ODS configuration. This is just a, some screenshots of what it looks like when you do it inside of EdFi. Um, one of the things, by the way, that we do is we tend to like start like one school at a time uh, just to kind of get one right and then push more later. Um, and then we go through this process of mapping. And so we go sort of domain by domain, code set by code set. And uh, essentially what we're doing is we're mapping uh, the ARIES uh, item into a, descript a descriptor of how it looks on the EdFi ODS side. So in our EdFi ODS, when we look at an, a, a, an attendance incident, uh, what we really care about is, is this an example of a kid being in attendance, having an unexcused absence or an excused absence? Um, that might be called many different things in, your, in a particular district's um, student information system. And the task of the district as we go through this mapping process is to map each of the codes that are in their SIS to these descriptors that we have sitting in our in our EdFi ODS. And the beauty of this is that as each district does this, the ODS side looks the same across each of our districts. So that then when we want to do analytics on top of it, we can do that in a consistent way. We found, by the way, that this initial mapping process can be done, you know, maybe in one half day session where we just crank through it uh, the first time through, uh, and then we can get into the errors process. Um, okay, great. So, so just there's more here. I'm not going to go through all the details, but there's, you know, errors, then we resolve the error, uh, and then we push again. And so we go through that process with folks. Generally speaking, um, we've estimated, put together some estimates for what it takes to actually do this and who should be involved. So this isn't working with us, but this might be helpful for you if you're thinking about doing um, uh, an FI project, which is you want an executive sponsor, you need an IT administrator, you need a SIS administrator, and then you need your data and analytics leads engaging here. The bulk of the work is done by your SIS administrator, somebody who can go in and do these, do these mappings and then help correct all the errors. All right, great. So, so then the question is, well, shoot, what do you do with all this information? Um, like, why would we, like, okay, all right, I got this thing into an ODS. You know, one thing we might care about is um, I've got this into an ODS and uh, I want to interoperate other data. That's certainly a really good use case. I want to bring in assessment data and uh, other things into the same place. And certainly, you know, EdFi has ways to do that. EdFi is also uh, you know, one of the things that we're looking into for, for the future is that EdFi has some ways to think about bringing in learning management system data. Um, but uh, in our use cases currently, we, we are primarily focused on this question of how can we use the SIS student information system data uh, and then do some analytics and then put reporting on top of it. One example of the kind of reporting that we're doing is uh, around on-trackness. And so this is something we've worked with core districts and with networks for school improvement across California that are trying to do on track improvement. And the idea is, uh, how do we know students on track um, and what level of on track are they? And so we've been working towards this idea of kind of five lanes of on trackness everywhere from kids who are significantly off track to kids that are in really great shape. Um, and so we've, we've been designing a, a point system uh, that, that uh, uses our longitudinal data. We have uh, data on, hundreds of thousands of kids and know which kids have graduated A to G and which kids have gone and on and been successful in college. And the idea is to develop kind of a point system, zero to 100, that tells us using predictive analytics where kids are likely to land uh, if they stay on this track. 
Um, and so we've got these five categories uh, and we've got these uh, sort of, uh, this is, this is a, a working draft example of our eighth grade point system where, you know, kids are uh, performing in a certain way in their A to G in, in their, in their ELA and math courses. Uh, and sometimes kids are taking kind of the on grade level course. Sometimes kids are in honors. Sometimes kids are in on grade level math. They're in eighth grade. Maybe kids are in algebra two. I mean, algebra one. And that determines like, you know, the weight that we put on their grades and the points they earned as well as other factors. All of this, by the way, is driven by our predictive model. We use that information then to uh, analyze on trackness and to drive information about, well, what percentage of kids in your school are in this like highest category or lowest category? Um, and then also uh, what percentage of kids moved up one on track level from eighth grade to ninth grade or seventh grade to eighth grade? Uh, and how do we progress monitor that? And so at various visuals, we are, so from an architecture perspective, what we've done so far is we run analytics like this inside of, um, inside of Snowflake uh, based upon data in the data warehouse. And then we uh, put Looker-based uh, dashboards on top of it. Looker is a business intelligence tool uh, out there in the world. So this is an example of a visual that says, well, where were kids last year and where are they this year? How many kids do I have that moved from being vulnerable last year to now being um, uh, uh, post-secondary promising this year? And, and now I can drill into this list of kids. Um, or give me a list of all my kids uh, these are, you know, what was the student's name this year, student's name, grade level, uh, school year, uh, where were they last year, where are they right now, um, how strong is the student's schedule, uh, uh, what is their GPA, and how many points are they earning for that, and so where are they in their points year to date based upon this information, and how, how, are, they, how are they looking right now. Also, the idea of like a uh, a student uh, profile page where I can then see for this particular student, like where are they and they're on track test, how are they doing in, in each of their courses, uh, what are their courses, what are their grades, et cetera. Um, we've also developed a set of attendance visuals that build directly off of uh, attendance uh, dashboarding that builds directly off of uh, uh, the EdFi source data. And what I wanna point out here is this is taking sort of raw student information system data across multiple districts and putting into a common format uh, and then running uh, sort of uh, analytics that help us look at things uh, in a given year and across years. Um, so for example, in this case, we we're looking at, you know, right now about 16.65% of your kids are chronically absent uh, compared to this time last year is about 15.7%. We also break down the attendance categories according to the attendance works kind of categories of satisfactory at risk, um, moderate chronic absence and severe chronic absence with each of these being drillable to student level. We didn't do things like, well, let's look at, you know, what does chronic absenteeism look like over time? Uh, and we, part of what we try to do is bring our knowledge about the periodicity of attendance. So we, we know that chronic absenteeism changes kind of every 10 days because it's the uh, percentage of kids who have uh, missed more than 10% of the school year. So every 10 days, you can miss one more day and not be chronically absent. And so we display this data about chronic absenteeism, not every day, but every 10 days in order to make it uh, uh, smooth over time and appropriately interpretable. And then benchmark against prior years. So you can see, is this the normal trend? And then see for different student groups as well. Um, and then, you know, what's, what, what does this look like across the schools in my district? So what's the percentage of kids who are in these different categories across schools and then uh, be able to get to different schools. Sim similar idea here is like then drilling in and seeing, okay, well, who are these kids and, and what's their attendance rate? Um, uh, how many excused, how many unexcused absences and things of that nature. Um, so uh, filters on different things, et cetera. So uh, that's given folks kind of a high level sense of, you know, how we've thought about EdFi and our, our immediate use cases, which have been uh, attendance dashboarding and working towards some on-track dashboarding. I'll, I'll sort of pause and see if there are any questions. Uh, uh, please throw them in the chat box or you know talk out loud, and that'll be uh, what we can do next in this piece. And no questions just yet, Noah, but uh, we would be happy to take some at this time.
Eric, while folks are thinking of questions, is there anything you think uh, I missed that might be uh, of interest uh, to, to share with these fine people about our Ed5 philosophy? Um, sure. I mean, yeah, the the data warehousing this stuff is, is a really interesting process. There's something I can show really quick in case it's uh, of interest here, which is we use an open source tool called DBT for our data transformation workflows, which makes things uh, very nice. This is a zoomed in graph of the workflow. This is a directed acyclic graph. So this is the student grades that is producing GPAs downstream. If we zoom out, you can see this is, uh, this is rather complicated. I've excluded some notes from this graph. A lot of this comes from needing to handle both 2X and 3X versions of, of Ed5. Um, but yeah, we have this whole data flow chart that shows how, how this system operates and what kind of uh, complexity is, is necessary to do all of this. Um, but yeah, this, is, this has been really powerful. This, this is operating on, as I said, multiple versions of EdFi, even across many districts in California and including some districts from other states. So you can really see how this kind of standardization can, uh, can pay off. Isn't this fun? John Watson thinks it's fun. Uh, I was I was gonna I was gonna type in in the chat, but I I guess I could I could speak up and say it's really cool to see the the, the flow diagram. And I wonder, you know, it's nice to have those systems set up. And, it, and I, I could just see feel the benefit that you get from having that type of structure around data flow. Um, how long did it take to set up something like that? For, for within the core districts, I know you had you know well-established systems already in place, but then you, you brought this on and and uh, implemented it. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. The proof of concept of it, where we stood up just the attendance portion, uh, took about a month. Uh, going going deeper and really building it out more robustly than that has has taken a little while, um, but. Uh, it's it's not it's it's complicated. There's the EdFi data model is complex, and there's a lot of flexibility to account for, particularly if you want to be able to handle uh, a lot of the customization that is possible, um, if not necessarily used in practice right now. Um, so uh, yeah, dealing with all the corner cases is, is what makes it take a while. But uh, yeah, there's there's uh, some some months of effort represented here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, Eric, it's great to have you on. And uh, no, I appreciate uh, the insights into what you're working on with respect to EdFi and how, it, how, how it's all playing out. It was uh, interesting on the other end of the spectrum to see the, the California uh, cradle to career system discussion earlier today. And I wonder how all of these systems are going to weave together over the next probably decade or, or so. I mean, it's cer certainly this is not all going to happen fast with respect to those statewide systems. So. I, th I think it's it's increase, increasingly important for us to have these types of systems that are regional in nature and be able to um, keep them moving. I, in fact, even from the early discussion this morning from Kathy Booth, there's a sense that they are going to need to have some kind of pipe of data going back to regional efforts so that you can get more granular data that you can work with more regularly. It'd just be interesting to see what that flow is gonna end up being some years from now, so. Well, I, uh, thanks again, Juan Pablo, Noah, Eric, um, and also Brian for, for moderating. So um, some of us will be moving over to the, and hopefully everyone can, to the speakers panel. The question is going to be, uh, what kind of metrics should we be concentrating on as we emerge from the pandemic? That's an interesting question. And so we're gonna spend about 25, 30 minutes on, on that really focused question and wind down the day. Regardless, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you to the speakers and hope everybody has a good rest of their day, rest of their afternoon.